In this short video, I give you sample clips from much longer lessons to give you an idea of what the lessons look like and how I teach. There's one from each of the four sections, cross-culture, in the classroom, living in the West, and critical thinking or learning how to think logically. The first one is how I teach logic. And the, in this clip, I show you about how I go about starting to teach logic. I teach thinking logically the same way I learned to think logically, by learning how to answer why questions. Five of the six questions, who, what, where, when, and how, are all what I call database questions. They all have a right answer, that answer can be memorized. There's no thinking required. Why, on the other hand, is different. Often there is no right answer, therefore nothing to memorize. Thinking is required. There's a set of five steps that you must go through, a set of five thinking skills you must learn in order to answer a why question. Let's take a look at them. First is collect information. And that here what we learn is we learn where to collect information. What type of information are you looking for? Where might you find good information? Where might you find bad information? We learn here the concept of relevance. Relevance is something that I've been unable to translate properly into Chinese. The closest I've come is gantimu you xiangguanda, has a relationship with the subject or the point but that we will learn what relevance means. It's maybe the most important concept in Western communication, but more about that later. So after we've collected the information, now we analyze the information. Well, what do you do here? Well, you look, is it good information? Is it bad information? Is it truth or opinion? Is it fact or belief? And so what we do is we basically throw out the bad information. And so now what we've got is we've collected information and we've analyzed it. And it's all what we will call acceptable information. Then you move on to step three. The lesson goes on to complete the other three steps. Then we look at all five steps in detail. And this really forms the foundation for the how to improve your ability to think logically section. The next clip is from the in the classroom section and that it is all about Chinese and making mistakes. As you'll learn in this course, mistakes are viewed differently in the West than they are in Chinese culture. In the West, we think mistakes are a natural part of learning, whereas Chinese tend to be afraid of making mistakes. And in this clip, I explain why I think that is. In Chinese culture, the focus isn't on learning. The focus is on doing the right Thing. And how Chinese achieve this is parents and teachers, um, they punish every mistake a person makes with the idea that eventually they won't be making any mistakes, therefore they're doing the right thing. Well, maybe, but that there comes a, a huge cost. The cost is, is that the Chinese become very afraid of making mistakes, very afraid of trying something new. It ends up with that famous Chinese phrase, uh, 多说多错, 少说少错, 没说没错. The more I say, the more mistakes I can make. The less I say, less mistakes I can make. If I don't say anything, I won't make mistakes. They also use it for um, to do things. 多做多错. The more I do, the more mistakes. The less I do, the less mistakes. If I don't do anything, I won't make mistakes. Well, this is quite a natural reaction to being punished for every mistake you make, but it's totally different than Western culture. This drives Westerners crazy because in the West, it's all about 
learning, not about doing the right thing. Of course, we want people to do the right thing, but we also want them to learn. Well, am I sure that that's why Chinese are afraid of making mistakes? No, but I think it has to be at least a big part of the reason. So the next clip we look at is from the cross-culture section, and it's part of the rules of communication that you will learn, that each culture has its own way of using language, what I call their rules of communication. And one of the rules of communication deals with asking questions. In this clip, I start to explain what Western view of asking questions is like. Ask questions if you don't understand. Please, please ask questions if you don't understand. I can't see up here. I don't know if you understand or not. In the West, asking questions is something that comes quite natural. We believe that the only stupid question is one you don't ask. Well, in Chinese culture, the rule of communication about questions is don't let people know you don't understand. And I believe a large part of this is about diolian, is about losing face. What Chinese don't realize is, is that in the West, asking questions doesn't cost you face, doesn't make you lose face. Not asking questions and then doing something wrong makes you lose face. You will spend a long time learning about questions, about asking questions, about answering questions. What's a good answer? What's a bad answer? What do you answer when you don't know the answer? How do you know what a good question is and a bad question is? Your ability to ask and answer questions will go a long way to finding out whether you're successful or not in a Western classroom. The next clip we look at is Chinese and yes, no questions. Westerners get frustrated with how Chinese answer what we consider the simplest possible questions, a yes, no question. Yes, no questions are very simple. What's a yes, no question? Any question that can be answered with one word, yes or no. Are you busy? Yes. Are you full? No. Did you go see the movie? Yes. Is your name Greg? Yes. Yes. No questions. Westerners think these are the simplest questions to answer, but are very frustrated with Chinese because yes, no questions are not to answer yes, no questions very well. Why? Well, I think it's a lot to do with Chinese language itself. Let me explain. We're going to look at four simple questions and how Chinese answer them and how Westerners answer them. First question, are you Chinese? Chinese would answer, sure. Westerner would answer, yes. Uh, are you okay? Are you good? Chinese would answer, hao. Westerner would answer, yes. Doi ma, uh, really? Is that right? Um, ch Chinese would answer, doi. Westerner would answer, yes. Ni mang ma, are you busy? West Chinese would answer, mang. Westerner would answer, yes. Four questions. Chinese answer them in four different ways. Westerners just choose one word, yes. And this is what I believe is the, the problem, is that Chinese don't have experience using just one word to answer yes-no questions with yes or no. It's something that's easy to fix, and we're going to look at that right now. Now, am I sure that this is why Chinese tend to have trouble answering yes-no questions with yes or no? Uh, no, I'm not sure, but I'm confident it has to be a big part of the answer. Well, now that you've watched all four, it's time for your bonus clip. And your bonus clip is 
top four things that Westerners complain about Chinese communication. You will learn the top 10 things that Westerners complain about and the top 10 things that Chinese complain about. So here's the top four that Westerners complain about. And so here are four common things that Westerners say about Chinese. They say, Chinese don't tell me enough, especially mistakes or bad news. Now, we're going to be looking at mistakes in uh, another part of this little video, and so I won't deal with that right now, but this is maybe the most common. Second, they don't tell me when they don't understand something. Ay, yo. Um, you talk to a Chinese group and you go, okay, are there any questions? Do you understand? And they smile. Um, Westerners who don't know the Chinese think, oh, good. Um, the Chinese all understand because in the West, silence means agreement. And we look at that in another area as well. Um, third, Chinese don't ask enough questions. You see a theme here? Finally, Chinese don't say yes or no. They tell me a story, and from that story, I have to guess yes or no. Now, you will learn the top 10 things that Westerners say about Chinese communication and that Chinese say about Western communication. Well, learning what Westerners say about Chinese communication gives you a great head start in knowing where to focus your energies, knowing what problems there are so you now know what you need to work on. I guarantee you, if you don't know a problem exists, you are not going to solve it. So these are some sample clips from the lessons. I hope it gives you a better idea of what the lessons are like and what my teaching method is like. I like what I do. I like teaching. I have a good time when I'm teaching. I try and make my students laugh. I'm going to do my best to make you laugh. And that in the end, I hope that we have a good time together on this. Thank you.